talk to you now. That's nice to know if everyone's well. Cigarettes in the winter, it's just like so crisp and nice. And then the rain is the best. Stress and combination of Adderall. Uh, I went to a French school and um, went around the corner and my teacher handed me a cigarette. No joke. That was my first cigarette. Cats is really good. The other reality is if you do, I, I'm a social worker. There's a variety of chemicals that you find in cigarettes that may affect a person he, person's health. Um, there's over 200 and plus chemicals that are in there, and many of those chemicals have been known to cause cancer, so carcinogen types of chemicals. Probably what we focus on the most would be um, nicotine, because nicotine is what gets individuals addicted to the tobacco product. So once they're addicted, then the other chemicals can come in and cause um, complications from that as well. Um, for many years, there's been research on tobacco, looking at those different types of chemicals chemicals and things that can be done to reduce them and even if they try and reduce some of those chemicals they probably won't be able to eliminate those to reduce the risk that would occur. Um, so again the nicotine is probably what focuses the most which introduce those chemicals into an individual. Um, nicotine itself is also a stimulant so that can cause problems be it for the heart um, or you know blood pressure on complications like that too. And then with some of the chemicals that you see entering the body be it through the burning process and that can increase risks in the lung cancer that we oftentimes associate with tobacco smoke. Long-term effects on health, um, especially if people start smoking young, uh, many people oftentimes pick up the habit, young people 12 or 13 years old, maybe when they initially pick it up, and their body is still growing and developing, so the cells are still new cells that are dividing. So if we get some of those chemicals or damages to those cells at such a young age, it might be more likely that those will perpetuate and divide later on to develop complications um, for cancer, for example. But also long-term effects with cardiovascular disease, some of those chemicals in the tobacco can actually damage the artery walls and cause buildup um, in those arteries to lead to the plaque buildup for heart attacks and strokes, things like that. More with heart disease, you may see more immediate effects with the nicotine and the stimulant and the smoke getting into the system. Um, so it's more of immediate because if individuals quit smoking, they can actually reduce their risk for heart disease. But the long-term effects they get because of cancer can never be eliminated through that. So the long-term effects may link more closely to cancer than heart disease. It would always be effective to quit smoking. If a person wants to quit smoking, regardless of how long they've smoked, it'll always be a benefit for them. So even if they've smoked for a couple months or for a couple of years or 30 or 40 years, the benefit will always be there, especially with heart disease since a lot of the effect is more immediate, again with the nicotine stimulant and the smoking there, that an individual who quits smoking within a year can be at a risk for heart disease about that of a non-smoker. The complication is with cancer, that individuals, once the chemicals are in the system, they'll never completely reduce that risk. But the recommendation is, since it is the leading cause of preventable disease in this country and preventable death in this country, that regardless of age and how long you've been smoking, it would always be a benefit to quit. It's really not healthy. I know. <laughs> I know 
know with smoking when individuals try and quit, it's a very difficult process um, for most people. I've known several people, co-workers who have a husband that quit cold turkey and he was able to do it successfully, but that she had a very difficult time and needed to go through a lot of kind of behavioral changes to get through that as well. Um, there are a lot of programs that are out there that individuals can do, and again, it's oftentimes the physiological addiction and the psychological addiction that need to be broken. Uh, and what we found research-wise is that young people oftentimes if they use some type of assistance such as a nicotine patch or nicotine gum or nicotine medicine that seems to help younger people more so than older people. My advice if someone's trying to quit smoking and you're not successful the first time continue to try because most people it'll take them an average maybe seven to ten times before they can actually quit and move through that. It is a strong process to do that and, and some anecdotally things I've heard is it's harder to quit tobacco than maybe some other drugs sometimes. There seems to be a higher addiction factor with that so it's difficult to have individuals quit but often having assistance be it with medication or a behavioral change program or a course or a class to help you quit or support from different quit lines and things that does seem to really help people try and, and break the habit of tobacco.